God bless you. Certainly God is able uh, to do exactly what he said he'll do. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we all should rejoice and be glad therein. God is certainly good to us. And he's worthy of all of our praise. And I want to uh, thank um, some of the members of our church. Uh, my sister and brother Calvin. And our musicians for uh, doing that for us. And recording it so that um, we can have a song that would encourage and uplift. Um, you doing this time to let you know that God is able. He's able to do exactly what he said he'll do. Um, before we start um, this morning, I want to uh, give a couple of announcements um, out um, that we all can be aware of. First of all, I want our members to know um, that we are doing um, our drive-by giving 11 to 12. I want our members to know um, that um, Deacon Petty um, is outside as you drive up to uh, get, give your tithes and offering. Um, you can uh, also receive a communion cup and um, with, with the juice and crackers if you don't have juice and crackers available at home and if you're coming by anyway. So I want to make you aware of that, that Deacon Petty is outside uh, with the communion cups where you can receive your communion cup um, as you um, give your tithes and offering on today. Um, this is also first Sunday to our members, and this is the Sunday where uh, those of us who are uh, participating, this is our first fruit Sunday, um, a minimum of $10, and you can go... Uh, beyond if you want to, uh, but this is our first fruit offering Sunday, and um, I want you to uh, participate and be blessed. And um, finally, the last announcement I want to give um, to us on today is this, um, that our Men and Women Day that was scheduled for the fifth Sunday in this month has been postponed to a later date. Uh, due to uh, our governor extending uh, the safer at home uh, ordinance that he have in place now, which is rightfully so. Um, and we understand that uh, the number of confirmed cases is on the rise. Uh, the death toll is rising. And so our governor uh, is doing uh, what he think is best. Uh, to keep all of us safe. I encourage all of us to adhere uh, to the safer at home uh, ordinance that's, uh, that our governor have in place. Uh, if you have to go out, do what you gotta do and get back uh, to uh, your house uh, or wherever you're staying, get back there. Uh, also wanna pray for those who are essential workers who have to be out. Uh, during this pandemic, we want to pray for them um, that God will keep them safe uh, from all hurt, harm, and danger. And um, so we want you to keep all of those announcements in mind. Again, Fifth Sunday, our Men and Women Day uh, has been postponed, uh, be postponed to a later date. Um, so though our contribution that we were, were supposed to give on that day um, if you want to hold it and pay it at a later date, that's fine too. Uh, so we want you to make you aware of that. Also, uh, online giving is G Armstrong4 at Comcast.net. G Armstrong4 at Comcast.net. There you'll see our church name and you can put it up and you can give uh, via PayPal. And I want to, again, just publicly uh, thank our members for uh, their support of our church, even though we're not here congregating together as our Sunday school lesson reminded us this morning that we are looking for that return of joy when we can come back to the same place and worship our God together collectively. But during this season, we still can worship him uh, wherever we may be because God is everywhere all at the same time. 
Uh, again, our finance team is here. Thank God for them. Thank God for our musicians here with us again. I did uh, call these two names last week or the week before, but I want to thank God for Brother Raymond and Sister Gerald Shelton for their, uh, their efforts, and they are helping us to continue to get our uh, service uh, streamed out to you, whether you're at home, at work, in your car. I want to thank them publicly for what they mean to our ministry in helping us to get the word out. Uh, the musicians and I, uh, we want to do a song for you all, and then we'll jump uh, right into the message. And while we're singing, uh, you can uh, turn to Mark chapter 4, verses uh, 35 through 41. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41 is where our uh, text will come from today. Uh, and I think it's a very relevant word uh, for um, the time we're facing. And many people are asking this question. Uh, that will be the title of our text today. And so um, we're going to do this song. And before we sing, let me make you aware of this. On Thursday at 6.30, Thursday at 6.30, uh, myself, Pastor Richmond, uh, we will be lecturing and preaching on Thursday night uh, at 6.30 here at uh, Third Mount Olive and B Church. You can uh, tune back in uh, at Thursday at 6.30. We'll be preaching and lecturing, uh, trying to uplift people during this time. Um, and I praise God uh, for Pastor Richmond, Pastor Longstreet, Dr. Davison, uh, Pastor Richardson, uh, Pastor Bucky Johnson, and uh, Pastor Sammy Hill, Pastor Cannon, Pastor Simpson. Uh, praise God for these brothers. We've been coming together weekly, meeting and praying and uh, discussing how we can better serve our people during these times. And so we'll be here Thursday night at 630 preaching and lecturing God's word uh, to uh, God's people. We got to keep on running despite uh, what we're facing now, we got to keep on running. We got to keep on going while the blood is running warm in our veins. Those church bell tone I stop and I wonder Lord how long You see the hearse wheels They're rolling too I tell myself That could have been you Gonna run I gotta run Every day gotta run. I gotta run. Oh yeah, while the blood keeps running warm in my veins. One more verse. Listen here. When these eyes 
a man is close and the blood in my vein is cold when I step out of life back door I won't be able y'all then I can't run no more gotta run come on put y'all hands together I gotta run Every day gotta run I gotta run Oh yeah While the blood Keep running warm in my veins Let me do that verse one more time, listen When these eyes a man is close and the blood in my vein is cold when I step out of life back door I won't be able y'all then I can't run no more gotta run I gotta run Every day gotta run I gotta run Oh yeah While the blood Keep running warm in my veins Let's go to work fellas I gotta run I gotta run Heels get high, but I gotta run. Valley get low, but I gotta run. Friends all go, gotta run. I gotta run. Look up and tell the Lord, I gotta run, 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 run. I gotta run. Run, 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 I gotta run, run, I gotta run, run, I gotta run, run, run. God bless y'all. While the blood keep running warm in my veins. Amen. Gotta run while the blood running warm in our veins. Let us pray, Father. Thank you now for our time together. Thank you for this opportunity of sharing. Father, give us insight into your word. Open our ears and hearts that we may hear your word, receive your word, and apply it to our everyday life. Father, remind us through this text that you care about what we're going through in this life during this season. We love you so much. And I, as always, as I pray, I pray, Father, that you'll govern my thoughts and you'll guide my tongue. I pray you'll let my light shine, but I pray you get the glory because it's always about you and never about me. And to that end, we give your name praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' name that we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Mark chapter is 4 commencing at verse 35 and concluding down at verse number 41 and hear it how it reads from the English Standard Version on that day when evening had come he said to them let us go across to the other side and leaving the crowd they took him with them in the boat just as he was and other boats were with him and a great windstorm arose and the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling but he was in the stern asleep on the cushion and they woke him and said to him teacher do you not care that we are perishing and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. 
And he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this? That even the wind and the sea obey him. God's word for God's people. The word of the Lord is already blessed. I want to go back to verse 38 and extract our title. And there was a question that was posed unto Jesus. And that question was this. Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Uh, I want to title this sermon with this question. Uh, does Jesus care? Uh, does Jesus care? Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those of you who are watching us, when you consider what we are facing in this world today, when you consider the novel COVID-19 and how it is not only affecting people here in the United States of America, but how it is affecting people everywhere around the world, the question often comes to mind, does Jesus care? When you consider uh, people who have lost their jobs, when people who have been laid off, when you consider people don't have money coming in like money once was coming in, it, it, it makes you ask the question, does Jesus care? When you even consider those who have contracted COVID-19 and some contracted it trying to help others, it makes you often wonder and ask the question, does Jesus care? When you consider when it seemed like that this situation that all of us are facing together as a people around the world, it makes you ask the question, does Jesus care? To push the envelope just a little farther, when you consider your own individual problems that you are facing in your life on top of COVID-19, it really makes you want to ask the question, does Jesus care? My brothers and sisters, my aim, my objective, my goal in preaching this sermon is to reaffirm your faith, to let you know that Jesus does care about what you are going through. Listen, he does care about this pandemic that we're facing. He does care about your individual problems that you're facing. I just want to remind you and to settle the questions and the doubts that is running rampant in your mind and in your heart that yes, Jesus, he does care about what we are going through. Now, those of you who will read Mark chapter 4, you, you will understand that Jesus was by the seaside and a very large crowd had gathered according to verse number one and he got in the boat so that the crowd would overtake him and he began to teach them many things. He, he taught them parables. Yes, he did. And, and matter of fact, he gave the purpose of the parable while he was teaching. He, he talks about the seeds, uh, the mustard seed. He, he gives them parables. He talks about how that people don't put a light under a basket, but they don't keep it secret, but they, they put it up where people can understand what he is talking about. They don't hide their light, but they let their light shine. He says, if anyone who has ears, let them hear, let them pay attention. He, he wanted us to pay attention in the parables that he was teaching. And after teaching, the parables, the Bible says that when evening had come at verse number 35, he told his disciples that they needed to get on the boat 
and they were going to cross to the other side. The Bible says he left the crowd, but there were other small ships that were along with him. And this is how life is, my brothers and sisters. When you are leaving from where you was, trying to get to where God say that you need to get through, get to, in the middle, my brothers and sisters, we faced storm. A storm showed up. The storm was unexpected. They did not plan for the storm. The storm just automatically showed up. That, that's how life is, my brothers and sisters. Storms come unannounced. Storms come at times when we are unaware. Storms just so happen to show up without an invitation. Listen, we, we all can testify to this. Not long ago, a storm by the name of COVID-19 showed up in America and it put a stop to everything that we were doing. It altered our routine. A storm showed up. Listen, some of you have been sick. You didn't plan to get sick. As a matter of fact, you was exercising to stay healthy. You was taking vitamins. You was dieting to stay healthy. But somehow, sickness still invaded your body. Storms just show up. My brothers and sisters, I learned in this life that you're going to face some rain. You're going to face some storms in this life. Listen, I'm, I'm from the quartet world. And they used to sing a song back in the days, back in the 90s. They used to sing this song about if there have never been any rain in your life, just wait a while. James says that trouble is coming to all of us. He said, count it all joy, not if you fall, but when you fall into divers temptation. My brothers and sisters, storms will show up. That, that's what happened in the text, a storm showed up. Now, if anybody that, that was on the ship that could have handled this storm or should have been able to handle this storm, it, it was four guys on the ship that could have handled this storm. That, that, that was Peter, his brother Andrew, that was James, and his little brother John. They were fishermen by trade. They made a living on the Sea of Galilee and if it was anybody that were familiar with this body of water, familiar with navigating on the water, it should have been John, it should have been James, it should have been Andrew, and it should have been Peter. Because when we were introduced to Peter, James, Andrew, and John, they were on the sea and they were fishing. And Jesus called them from their boats. You remember Peter and Andrew, they were fishing and Jesus walked by, he said, cast your net on the other side. It was Peter who said, we've been fishing all night. We haven't caught anything. But nevertheless, at thy word, we'll let down our net. And when he let down his net, they had a great catch. And from that day, Peter and Andrew, they began to follow Jesus. Then he went on a little further. He saw another ship, and it was James and John. And they were on the ship with their father Zebedee. And he called James and John. They left the family business. They left their families. And they started to follow Jesus. So if anybody should have known about this water. How to navigate. It should have been Peter, Andrew, James and John. But if Peter, Andrew, James and John could testify today. They'll tell you there are some storms no matter what your skill level is, no matter what you know, no matter who you know, there are some storms that you can't handle by yourself. I, I wish I had a witness you ought to put in the comment box. I know you're telling the truth, preacher, because listen, this pandemic that we're facing, we have, we have doctors who've been to Harvard. We have doctors who've been to Yale. We have doctors who've been to Ivy League schools and they still haven't found an answer to this problem that we're facing. We, we have doctors who have made headways and have made, uh, he, they have discovered great uh, research projects that could heal other diseases and kill other virus. But 
this virus they haven't found a concrete solution for which suggests to me there are some storms no matter where you went to school at no matter what your skill level is no matter what you know there are some storms only God can handle you ought to put that in the comments box only God can handle this when you consider the reports that we are looking at every day how the death toll is rising how confirmed cases are rising and they are nowhere near close to finding a vaccination for this horrific virus that we're facing you ought to know that there are only some storms that God can handle you've been walking with God long enough now that you've been in some financial tight in your life and God handled that storm you've been in relational tight in your life and God brought you through that you had a food sort in your life you do know they saying that we're about to run out of meat but here's the God I serve the God I serve if he fed a man but sent by the brook of Cherith if he fed a man meat and bread in the morning meat and bread in the evening surely he can feed us today if he fed 5,000 men not including the women and children with two fish and five barley loaves of bread surely he can feed us today listen he know we have need of these things according to Matthew chapter 6 he says we don't need to worry about what we're going to eat what we're going to drink and what we're going to wear because our heavenly father know we have need of these things but he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you the God I serve will take care of us black people know this ain't the first time we ever experienced a food shortage we know how to take a little bit and make a lot out of it we know how to take this and take that we know how to make a meal out of it. We know how to make a meal out of fat back and cornbread. We know how to make a meal out of milk and bread. We, we know how to make a meal out of molasses and bread. Listen, this ain't the first time we had a shortage. But if God brought us through then, God can bring us through now. You know, they are saying this at this time. This is one of the worst time in, in the history of the stock market. Well, if he brought us through the Great Depression in the early 30s and the late 20s, then surely he can bring us through now. There are only some storms that God can handle. And this is what the disciples learn. They learn that there are only some storms God can handle. But, but watch this. In the storm, we become fearful. In the storm, we become afraid. In the storm, while the storm is raging, while the wind is howling, while rain is beating down on us, we become discouraged, we become afraid, and it causes us to ask questions that normally we would ask. Watch the question. Watch the question. The Bible says they went and they found Jesus. The Bible says Jesus was in the hinder part of the ship on a pillow and Jesus was asleep. Now theologically this speaks to the humanity of Jesus because he was 100% God and he was 100% man. In this text, as God he calmed the sea but as man he slept in the storm. So the text Mark is trying to show us or give us a theological truth that Jesus was the God man because the Bible says he was in the bottom of the ship laying on a pillow and he was asleep. Now this should have gave word, gave comfort to the disciples to let them know that if Jesus is asleep while all this is going on then we need to chill out. We, we, need, to, we need to back up we need to breathe. We, we need to calm down because if he's asleep and he has all power in his, his, his hand, if he's not worried, if he's not stressing out, then guess what? We need to chill out. But humanity took over. They were fearful. They were afraid. They summoned Jesus. They woke him up and they asked this question. 
master, teacher, cares not that repair it. In other words, let me put it in our term today. Lord, this storm is going on. Lord, water is getting to the ship. Lord, if, if, you don't, if you don't do something, we are not going to make it through this storm. And we just want to know, do you really care about what we are going through? In, in, the, in the hymn book, there's a song that, that, that is entitled, Does Jesus Care? And it talks about, does he care when we're going through? Does he care about our burdens? And this is the same thing that Peter and the disciples, they wanted to know. Do you really care about what we're going through? Care is not that we're perish. Do you really care that we're about to drown? Do you really care that this boat is about to break and, and fall into pieces? Do you really care that there may be some casualties in this voyage? We just want to know, do you really care? If you would be honest with me, if you would be honest with others and be honest with yourself and pull that halo off your head, the, the thought have came through your mind at one point or another, Lord, do you really care that I've been laid off? I don't have a way to pay my bills. Lord, do you really care that there's a few food shortage that is about to happen? How are we going to survive? Lord, do you really care that we're not back at church together worshiping you? Lord, do you really care that my hopes and dreams that I had planned for my life that now has all been gone to smithereens? Lord, do you really care? A lot of us have been asking that question. Look what they say is, Cares not that we perish. They really wanted to know, Lord, this, this thing is really about to take us out. We just want to know if you really care. We want to know, can you do something about our situation? That's what a lot of people want to know from God. Lord, we know you can, but will you do something? We are like that man who brought his son to Jesus. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, I know you can do it, but when are you going to do it? Will you do it? As I told the Sunday school class this morning, that listen, we need to have the faith of the Hebrew boys that even if he don't do it, we still know that he's able to do it. God didn't take them from the fire. He allowed them to go in the fire, but he still brought them out of the fire. They said, even if we don't deliver us, we still know that he is able. That's the faith that we need to have. Instead of asking questions, does he care? Because we know he care. Instead of asking that question, sometimes we need to ask the question, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? Because God don't send the storm just to send the storm. There's a reason behind every storm that God sends in our lives. They wanted to know. They had to ask the question, do you really care? I like what Jesus did. He didn't give them a verbal answer. He didn't answer their question by saying, yes, I care. But he gave them a visible answer. The answer wasn't verbal, but it was visible. Because when he got up, the Bible says he spoke to the wind. And he spoke to the water. He says, peace, be still. Now, now I like that. Because that lets me know that he's able to speak to my situation. And my situation have ears to listen to the voice of the master. Some of y'all missed that. Let me rewind and say that again. He has the power to speak to my situation and my situation have ears and they can hear the voice of the master. It may not hear my voice. It may not heed and quit at my voice, but when my master speak, when my Lord speak, when my God speak, then guess what? I don't care how big the storm is. Don't care how long the storm has been raging. When God speak, the storm have to stop. When God speak, and what I love about God, every storm you ever see that he enter in, he always speak 
peace before he speak anything else. He said, peace be still. He rebuked the wind and he rebuked the water. The old preacher would say when he said, peace be still, he says the lightning stopped flashing, the thunder stopped clapping, and the water laid down like a little baby going to sleep at night. He's able to speak peace in the midst of your storm. Some of you, you don't need money. You don't care if the government, government send you a stimulus check or not. You need some peace. You don't care if they come up with a vaccination or not because you've been stressing out over some other issues and you need peace. You ain't been sleeping at night. You've been pacing the floor. But I came to tell you, God is able to speak peace even in the midst of your storm. He spoke to the wind and he spoke to the water. He said, peace be still. And watch what happened. It's amazing that nature obeys the voice of God but we won't obey his voice because the Bible says as soon as he spoke it the Bible says that the wind stopped and the Bible says the water went from being chaotic to come the water stopped as if nothing ever happened the clouds rolled back and the sun began to shine the wind heard his voice and obeyed the water heard his voice and obey which suggests to me that when he speaks no matter what's going on in my life when he speaks things have to turn around when he speaks things have to work out for the better when he speaks listen somebody ought to put in the comment box that say speak Lord speak to my situation speak to this pandemic speak to my financial situation speak to my relational situation speak to all of the issues in my life speak to my help that my help may recover Lord I need you to speak and make things better in my life because when you speak things have to obey your voice my grandmama she was no theologian she, she didn't go to seminary like me but my grandmama said when God speak he got enough power to make man lay down and die and if he speak again, he have enough power that same dead man to get up and live again. He can speak and close the door. Speak again and open the door. When he speak, things have to happen. Not only that, and I'm done with this. But then he rebukes the disciples. Because the disciples should have had faith in God no matter what they were facing. It kind of ties in with the Sunday school lesson this morning that God wanted the children of Judah to have faith no matter what the circumstances dictated unto them. God told them, he prophesied to them through Jeremiah that they was going into Babylonian captivity. It was going to last, it was going to last 70 years. But in Zephaniah, he wanted them to be encouraged that he wanted them to have faith. Don't fear, I'm going to make things better in your life and instead of the disciples believing had faith listen they were so afraid and Jesus said listen why are you so afraid have you still no faith that's the question he want to ask some of us why are you so afraid during this pandemic I, I know what the report say but whose report are you going to believe or are you going to believe my report or are you going to believe the report of the reporters and the report of the doctors. Listen, I said it this morning. Let me say it again. Faith does not eradicate facts. But what faith says, faith says, I'm going to believe God no matter what the facts may say. I believe God. And I want to encourage your faith this morning that regardless of whatever you face it, listen, it may seem hopeless, it may seem dim, it may be dark, but listen, believe God because this too shall pass. Believe God because weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Believe God because God is able to turn things around. I, I heard Paul says, Paul says this, that listen, it's going to work out for our good and we know all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose I, I heard Joseph 
tell his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for my good. Satan meant this thing for evil, but God is going to have some good come out of this. I, I believe in some good already came out of this pandemic. The good is some of us are closer to God now. We no longer have any more distractions. We are praying more. We are listening more. We are in our word more. Listen, we don't have the choir anymore to cheerlead us on. We don't have the praise team. But now all we got is the word of God. And I think I heard Jesus saying one day, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Y'all have a good day. May the Lord bless you. We are good. But on my way back to Brooksville, Mississippi, let me tell somebody that listen, not only we looked at the storm, not only we saw how they summons the Savior to deliver them from their storm. They asked the question, does Jesus care? Do you really care that we're about to perish? No, he didn't give a verbal answer, but he gave them a visible answer. That thing that was stressing them out, that's the very thing that he stopped. Listen, this pandemic been stressing some of us out, but guess what? If he speak, and not if he speak, but when he speak, in his own time, in his own way, when he get ready to turn it around, God, he will turn it around. This same thing that have us stressing out will be the same thing that God will, he will turn it around. Listen, watch this. They end by celebrating they end by praising God. The Bible says, they, I like the King James Version because in the King James Version, it says they were so amazed. And they ask another question because when God, yeah, when God deliver you, when the Lord bring you out, your questions ought to change. And it ought to be a question, not of a question of doubt. But it ought to be a rhetorical question. It ought to be a question of affirmation. Because look at the last question they asked. They said, what manner of man is this? That even the wind and the waves yeah, cease to obey him. What manner of man is this? That's able to speak to my situation. And he's able to turn situations around. What manner of a man is this uh, that can speak uh, to my sick body and my sick body begins to recover? What manner of a man is this uh, that he's able to speak to my financial situation and my financial situation, it turns around? Uh, what manner of a man is this uh, that he has enough power to speak to the wind and speak to the water and wind and water obey his command somebody ought to testify that he's powerful yes he has power he's able I said he's able he's able to turn it around won't he do it I said won't he turn it around that ain't the only situation that he spoke in that ain't the only situation that he showed up in one Friday he showed up for all of us one Friday he showed up at Calvary at 3 o'clock he laid his head in the locks of his shoulder he died for your sin and mine but he didn't stay dead he turned it around early Sunday morning uh, he got up uh, all power of heaven and earth in his hand uh, and if he got power uh, to turn my sin situation around he had the same power to speak to my storm uh, and my storm uh, my storm would have to stop uh, won't he do it I said won't he do it if you know he'll do it uh, Put it in the comment box. Uh, tell somebody uh, he's able uh, 
to turn my storm around. He's able. I said he's able. No matter the, how hard the wind may blow. The, no matter the, how hard the rain may fall. Uh, my soul is anchored in the Lord. Uh, though the storm keep on raging in my life. Uh, though it's hard uh, to tell the night from day. Uh, still that hope uh, that lies within uh, it reassures uh, and even uh, if the wind don't cease uh, even uh, if the storm don't start raging uh, my soul uh, is anchored in the Lord uh, my soul is anchored in the Lord does he care? I want to answer with a yes an emphatic yes he cares about what we are going through don't be like the disciples I, I know that it look bad right now I know it look hopeless right now I know it seemed like COVID-19 is not going anywhere I know it seemed like your finances are not going to turn around I know it seemed like your health would never recover but have faith that if he speaks to your storm, your storm, he's able to turn it around. Notice what the text says. He said, peace be still. And when he spoke, the wind stopped blowing. The water laid down. Waves stopped getting into the Stop rocking the boat. A great calm came. And that's what ought to happen. When God show up and when God speak up in your situation, there ought to be a great calm that calm all over you. I'll be honest with you. When COVID-19 hit America and people were being affected and numbers was rising, I was afraid. I was afraid. Number one, I was afraid because this never happened before. We don't have medicine for this. Number two, as a leader, I was afraid because there's no book, there's no guideline on how to lead during a pandemic. So it made me totally rely on the Lord. But as God began to speak and to minister to me, and assured me everything was going to be all right. A great calm came over me. A great ease came. Because he reminded me that he cares. He knows exactly what I'm going through. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He'll guide until the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. No one can heal. All of our soul diseases. No, not one. No, not one. Listen, I want to extend the invitation to discipleship. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, listen, you can accept him in your life right where you are. Yes, you can. You can do it right where you are. You can ask him to enter into your life and ask him to save you. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that he is the son of God. Believe that God raised him from the dead. And confess it. You may be around somebody. Confess it to them that Jesus Christ has entered to your heart and saved your life. Secondly, I'm going to pray for you. Because all of us need prayer during this time. I'm going to pray for you. That God strengthen you during this time. That he take care of you during this time. That those of you who are stressing out, those of you who are even paranoid, those of you who are panicking during this time, I want to pray that God speak peace to you today. That's what I want to do. Father in heaven, Lord, I come petitioning the throne of grace. 
you said in your word that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we can find grace, mercy, and help in the time of need. So, Father, we're coming to you because during this time, we need you. During this time of uncertainty, we need you to speak peace to our hearts, to, pe to speak peace to our minds. We need you to speak peace to us. Now, Father, I pray for those who've been stressing out, for those who've been paranoid, for those who've been panicking. I pray that you give them peace during this time. I pray, as always, as I've been praying lately, for those on the front line. Pray for our essential workers, whatever capacity they serve our communities. I pray for them, Lord, that you'll cover them as they work. I pray for nurses. I pray for doctors. Pray for police officers. I pray for pastors because, Father, even pastors, we are essential workers because your word says, how can they hear without a preacher? So, Father, we are essential to the body of Christ, to the spiritual work of our nature, nation. So, I pray for pastors, Lord. I pray for mayors. I pray for governors. I pray for supervisors. I pray here in West Point for selectmen. I pray for everyone who's in leadership position that's trying to lead during these times. Give us wisdom. Give us grace. Give us knowledge to lead during these times. Lord, speak peace. Let us know that everything's going to be all right. Remind us that this too shall pass. Speak peace. Those who are affected by this horrific virus, heal their bodies if it be your will. They can come with a testimony that you are a healer. Touch them, Lord. Touch those on the ventilators. Father, I pray for those who lost loved ones to this horrific virus. I pray for Pastor Hawkins, Pastor of the Peter Rock Church in Starkville, Mississippi. As he said farewell to his wife on this past week, give him strength. Not only him, but others who lost loved ones during this, during this time. Give them strength. Lord, as we prepare to partake of your blood and your body, I pray that you bless us. Those who only have juice and crackers at home, I pray you will bless that as they participate virtually in the Lord's Supper. Thank you so much for what you did for us at Calvary. Thank you for your body being broken. Thank you for your blood being shed for the remission of our sins. We love you so much and we praise you in the mighty, marvelous, and miraculous name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We're getting ready to partake of the Lord's blood and body. You have your juice and crackers at home. Those of you who've been by the church, you have your juice and crackers with you. Yes, it's juice and crackers, but listen, it symbolizes our Lord's body and his blood that was shed for us. On that last week of Jesus' life, Jesus told Peter, John, to go into the city. He says, there you'll find a man carrying the pitcher. Tell him your master have need of his upper room. The Bible says they went they saw the man with the picture. They told him what Jesus said. And the man made his upper room available. Jesus and the other disciples joined the two that evening. And that evening, he took bread. He blessed it. He said, this is my body which shall be broken for you. 
He said, eat all of it and do it in remembrance of me. Wherever you are, let us eat bread. Like manna, he took the cup. He blessed it. He says, this is my blood which shall be shed for you. And we know as the Hebrew writer says, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So he took the cup, he blessed it. He says, drink ye all of it and do it in remembrance of me. Let us drink. The Bible says they sung a hymn and they passed out. Listen, we're about to conclude our service today. But listen, we want to ask God to reassure you that he cares for you. And he knows exactly what you're going through. I pray that you won't doubt God. That, But like never before, continue to trust him. Draw closer to him during these times. Because yes, he does care for you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Go in peace.